Take it to the limit Give everything you got to give No matter how you spin it We only get one life to live And all it takes is a spark To set the night on fire Release your heart's desire Flames getting higher The Nikon Z6 is finally here, and it is a winner of a camera. This was not something that we expected. Well, for the most part, some of it, yes, but that new sensor, wow. Never expected that. For all the people who completed about 24 megapixels, now that it's a partially stacked sensor with really good highlights and low light performance, yeah, I think that got some attention. What I wanna do in today's video is I'm gonna take you a bit back talk about some of the things that Nikon did to get to where they did with the Z6 III. Before we begin, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, there are links for items to purchase in the description area of each video. So let's look at the sensor. Partially stacked. This is something that we didn't expect at all. And because it's partially stacked, things like rolling shutter and bending of uh, golf clubs or things that are in motion when you're shooting photos and videos, yeah, that's gonna be significantly reduced. We know the Z8 can do this already because it's a fully stacked sensor, but with this in the Z6 III, the readout speed, they say is three times faster than the Z6 II. Based upon the XP7, they just use all that to extract as much as they could out of this sensor to give it a really great performance. I know that for those of us who shoot photography as well as video, you're gonna love this camera. We're talking 20 frames per second raw, up to 120 frames per second in high burst speed. That's great. On the video side, we're looking at 6K60 raw internally. Now, let me say this. I, for one, was expecting that this camera would have to have some kind of active cooling especially if Nikon plans to let it run like the Z8 for two hours and five minutes. Yep, I was wrong. Kudos to Nikon for pulling off something that is really unexpected. Everybody else has been putting some kind of fan or cooling device. Nikon has made it so that you can have a sealed body, weather sealed body, for dust and moisture that can still perform as a great photo camera as well as a great video camera. And for that long run time, yeah. Most of the guys are doing 6K60 with a crop. And if they're doing raw, you're doing it externally. Here, we got it all internally and no crop. Wow. I'm, I'm just, you know, I look at the specs, I'm like, wow, this is, this is something. During the development process, this screen has been around since the Z9. They wanted to incorporate it in the Z9, but at the time, since the Z9 was pretty much finished, they had to go ahead and tweak circuitry and do things a bit different, so they didn't want to have to go through that. So they didn't put it in the Z9 or the Z8, but here it comes in the Z6 III, and it is another game-changing feature. I guess we can call it a world's first as well. So two world's first. They didn't call it world's first, but we know that from what it can do, the only other two cameras on the market with really bright EVFs are the Z8 and the Z9. And here comes the Z6 III, taking it to the next level. Of course, the autofocus is a big thing. Me, personally, with the Z6 II, I had some issues with it when it came to video, and that's one of the reasons why I ended up going to Sony, because I do YouTube, I need something that's gonna attract me and keep my face in focus, especially during these situations where I'm doing a talking head video where I can't really see what's going on because the camera didn't have a flip out screen. So I had a lot of mess up. And talking about the flip out screen, now we have one. For those of us who are solar content creators and are looking for a camera that you can use to record yourself, whether it's vlogging or whether it's a talking head scenario like this one, now you have the screen 
that they'd be able to do it. I was hoping for better screen, but you know what? I can't, I'm not gonna lie. Nikon has pretty good screens and they're pretty bright for use outdoors. So having the better EVF, you know, I'm okay with not getting the an HDR screen on the rear of the camera. I think most people are gonna be happy with that. A lot of people who do as wedding and events and they wanted something that can flip out for videos. And yes, it'd be nice. Now, some of us were expecting something like the A7R5, but from watching the guys in Japan talk about the development, they wanted to make sure that this camera was going to be small, compact, and pretty more lightweight. Adding a bigger, more bulky screen on it would have added more to the weight. So kudos to them for giving us the flip out screen. And guys, in the future, if you can put a screen like on a Sony camera, uh, one of your future cameras, yeah, the A7R5, that multi-angle flip out tilt, yes. That one will make photographers and videographers really happy. I know some photographers are not gonna be happy with the flip out screen, but guys, it's not that big a deal. It's actually more useful than you think. As we talk solar content creator, we can't skip vibration reduction or image stabilization. My Z8 have pretty good image stabilization. I've shot with a ZF, which is even improved. And I know that Nikon probably use the same system from the ZF and tweak it a bit more for the Z6 III. From the videos I've been seeing, it looks pretty darn good. It's not Panasonic smooth, but it does a great job as far as for handheld shooting and walking around town and doing things. And of course, you can always stabilize it more in DaVinci Resolve. And for whatever NLE editor you're using, you can add a bit more stabilization to make it better. Now, I'll say this. I talked about the Z8 and being able to set the camera, not being able, but you have to set the camera at one two fifty per second or higher for the electronic stabilization to get rid of that wobble. Without the camera, I can't say for sure if that's going to be the same case, but hopefully they've dropped the levels down lower so you can use it all the time, like on the Sony cameras, but something we have to wait and see when the camera comes out. Now it also gets the ZF's focus point vibration reduction. That's great. I've been hoping that they will tweak my Z8 to give us that, but we haven't seen that yet. But now that it has it on the Z6 III, I still kind of hold out hope that now that they've incorporated on their new generation camera, we will get some firmware update in the future, bringing it to the Z8 and the Z9. That'd be something cool to have. As we talk video, this camera, as I mentioned before, 6K60 RAW on board. Now, of course, when you shoot in SDR mode, you can go up to 5.4K and you can crop, which is not a bad thing. The image quality is what most of us are concerned about. What I've noticed on my Z8 and also on the ZF, and it's probably the same thing on the Z9, is when you're shooting in SDR, it's not coming in at 422 10-bit, but 420. You will get to 422 when you're doing RAW. Now, some people may have a thing for that, but you know, from what I've been seeing utilizing my Z8, it's not been a big thing. And if you watch my video where I mentioned how this thing works, 420 versus 422, you don't lose that much in quality. And if you are shooting raw, you're gonna have the full 10 bit to work with. So, you know, there is that. Slow motion, they have gone all the way up to HD 240p. Now I don't do too much slow motion video. I've used it a few times on my FX30. I've never used it on my Z8. Now, seeing what you can do at 240 HD, yeah, I'm gonna to have to give it a shot and see what it looks like. Continue with video. Here is something that I didn't expect them to do, but I'm happy that they did it. There is the electronic zoom, and I call it electronic zoom, it's kind of a Sony thing, but basically it's utilizing the sensor to crop in an image while you're recording. I've tried it on my Z Z8 and it works pretty darn good. Now that I have it here on the Z6 III, that's a plus. Also, when it comes to audio, they are now allowing the 3.5 millimeter jack to take a line in signal. So for those of us who have a recorder and you plug it in XLR mics, you can get higher quality audio directly inside your footage. I've sometimes had to do mine externally and line them up inside of the software to get them to match. And you've seen in my last video that they didn't quite sync up correctly, but knowing that I can feed the footage inside there, yes, I'm happy. Thank you, Nikon. Now, when we're talking dynamic range, this is something that 
I didn't see mentioned on the US side. They talked about really good dynamic range, but they didn't mention how wide it is. Joe Orlando did this video and talk about the dynamic range. And I believe he said he's seen up to like 14 stops. On the Japanese side, I've seen him listed as 13 stops for the dynamic range, which I think is pretty good. Now, what Gerald found was that when you shoot it, you're probably getting around 10, 11, but of course, once you apply some noise reduction to the, the image, then you're pretty much right around 12. Still, pretty competent for this kind of camera. If you watch my video that I shot in 8K and I showed you how to clean up the footage on the Z8, yes, it can be done. And I did a follow-up video explaining how that happened and how painful it was to clean up a pretty grainy footage to get it looking really nice. You should check out the video if you haven't checked it out just yet. Here's another exciting thing. Like the ZF, they're rating the Z6 III to go down to minus 10 EV for low light capability to be able to focus. This is, this is great. You know, this new sensor is just wowing us. I was expecting to see the Z6 II ZF sensor inside this camera, but no, partially stacked, world's first, and even beating what the old sensors were doing. So that, that is a big plus. What I'm seeing on some of the footage, I know when I had my Z6 II and I've shot some nighttime footage, it looked pretty clean without too much noise reduction added. This one seems to be able to do some noise reduction in camera, or maybe it's something that they've done on the sensor. Now we know that Canon is coming out with the R1 and they're mentioning that they're gonna do some noise reduction inside the camera. Who knows, maybe this kind of thing that's happening in Z6 III. We know all this talk about AI features and what things can be done in cameras and just, just about everything. When you apply AI to it, you can improve the performance of camera devices, cars, whatever. You can do a whole lot more with AI. In my video that I did a couple of weeks back, I talked about how if we can do a lot more of these AI feature things inside the camera, it will make things a whole lot easier in our workflows as we're editing. And I was talking about that, we can talk about the film recipes. Nikon is calling them recipes. They're doing things like Panasonic and Fuji with LUTs. And I think, I forgot what Fuji calls theirs, maybe it's film recipe also, but, oh sorry, film simulations. So everybody's going down this path where they're allowing you, I call them filters. Like on your iPhone, you can throw filters on there and you can make things look better. You can change the tone of your image, same thing. Now, as you see, this was a requested feature. This is something that people wanted to have inside the camera. And they've also given an option for you to be able to make your own film recipes. And I think a lot of people are gonna like that. Maybe not as older folks, but the younger guys are like making things and tweaking it. People are selling presets from Lightroom and how to be able to tweak things and supply to your photo and go with this. Nikon is now giving you that option, just like the other guys, to be able to create your own, drop it in your camera. When you take your photo, it's already there. Tweaking is done. You don't have to worry about messing around with your photos. When you already have it set the way you want to set, Select it in the camera, shoot your photo, boom. Yeah, Nikon is just firing in all cylinders here. With all these new features, this camera is coming in at $2499, which is pretty much what I said it was going to be, right around $2500. Because when we saw the ZF come out at $2000, there was no way that the Z6 II was going to come by the same price point. Knowing that it has to match and beat some of the new gear that's on the market, we knew Nikon was going to pull out all the stops. It's interesting to see the design process that went into getting this camera together. How they had to figure out which body style to choose, what kind of grip they wanted to use with the camera, how they wanted to feel in the hand. This is something that we don't really think about. And a lot of times, most of us laymen, when we look at a device, we're saying, why couldn't they have done this? What, you know, why did they do this? Why couldn't they have done this? There's a lot of things that goes behind designing any kind of device, whether it be a car, or a computer, or a camera. There are a lot of times, a lot of mock-ups, a lot of design that they go through to finally come up with something that I feel is going to be the best balance for those of us. And I think they did a pretty great job with this new Z6 III. I can't wait to get my hands on one. Yes, I'm going to get one. 
it is something that I wanted. Part of me in the back of my mind saying, you know, you can sell the CA. It's not a major thing. You can do without that because what the Z6 II is giving you, it's what you really wanted. The Z8 is going to be that next level thing. It's more money than I ever spent on the camera. I really do like it, but I like to have something that's a little bit lighter with that flip out screen that I can take with me all the time and I can shoot with it. And one of the things that they did mention about this camera is how when they were designing the grip and out, you know, you hold it in your hands. I've mentioned this before in at least a number of videos. For the last couple of years with my mirrorless cameras, I have not been using a neck strap. Once in a while, I bring it out, but for most of the time, I'm just holding it in my hand and shooting it. Quite comfortable. The Z8, people always ask me, dude, where's the strap? You know, for you drop that thing? No, the grip is just so good. It feels so good in the hands. I don't need it. And I'm not saying that you should do the same, but if you try it out, you may find that you like it that way. Of course, there are hand straps out there if you want to have that extra security. But you know, for me, it's been a couple of years and I haven't dropped one, I haven't broken one. I'm excited. I am really thrilled with what Nikon is bringing with the Z6 III. It's been long awaited. It's been something that we've dreamt about, we've talked about, we've had our opinions on what we think that's gonna come. And now that it's here, all I can say is, wow. Now everyone, I'd like to hear your opinion and what you think about the Z6 III. Are you going to get one? Whether you've purchased a Z8 or some other brand, is the technology in this camera enough to make you switch or add it to your contingent of cameras? I know that I will be adding it. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video.